Our greeting to all of our parishioners and to all those who may be visiting is taken from our mission statement. Our Eucharistic community at Holy Cross welcomes all to faith in Jesus Christ. Today we not only celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, but also the conclusion of the year of faith. We have entered the open door of faith and taken the opportunity to respond to God's grace. Our parish year continues, realizing that faith continues to grow always, a faith which is alive in love and hope. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Eisman. Father will be assisted by Deacon Joe Placius. Please join in the entrance hymn, number 485, Crown Him with Many Crowns. begin our Eucharist this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you this morning. And with your spirit. Once again we come together to celebrate the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord. Today we have the additional celebration of the closing of the church year, and today we do it with the Feast of Christ the King. So let's take a few moments and think about this question. Is Christ in the center of my life? Jesus is Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ is our King, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Jesus will come again, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your, your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. I keep the book open to that, please. And now we invite our young people to come forward for their liturgy of the work. Our first reading is a reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father 
who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you. The ruler sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him and said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation, and indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds with our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning, everyone. We just heard Deacon Joe proclaim the words that were uttered by sneering soldiers at the foot of the cross of Jesus. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. 
In other redactions of the gospel, we have Jesus before Pilate, who says to him, are you then a king? Jesus says, you say, I am a king. What do we know of kings? From early childhood, we had stories told us before we were able to read even. Once upon a time, there was a great king who lived in a faraway country or something like that. And those stories inevitably ended with the words, and they lived happily ever after. So anyway, is the term king or the term queen, are these just uh, kind of mythological ideas? Aren't they rooted very much in history? Of course they are, for sure. One of the interesting things about the early days of our own country is a period in history that sometimes gets a little bit overlooked following the revolution, but before the Constitution was completed. And in those days, there were all kinds of ideas being put forward for what would best constitute the one who would be the leader of this newly formed democratic republic. There were certain types that kind of wanted to revert to the past and they made that known by claiming that they'd like to name or they'd like to see General Washington proclaimed king. Now they say that Washington didn't have the greatest sense of humor, but I can just picture him saying something about, what do you think we just fought a revolution for? What am I gonna do now, be a king, as after we tried to get and did succeed in getting free of foreign domination by the king of England? So that wasn't the answer. The term president wouldn't have meant too much to some of those very humble colonists. They, they were preoccupied with making a living so that they and their children got three square meals a day. But among the religious people in those days, those who had some voice in what was being done, they came forward with the statement we have no king but Jesus. There were some very, very religious people among those colonists, very, just as there were certain sort of free thinker types, well-intentioned like Franklin and Jefferson who believed in God, but not in a real, personal God who, who cares about us on a daily and nightly basis. So you had on the one hand, General Washington should be the king. We have, on the other hand, no one but Jesus is our king. And of course, the days of democratic um, emerging were only very, 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 very new. But yet those struggling colonists went ahead with what would become one of the most awesome experiments that the world had ever known. It wasn't the pure kind of democracy that the ancient Greeks could rave about and fantasize about, but it was something very worthwhile but back to our kings, do we have much precedent for that in religious history? We sure do. The people in Massachusetts, way before the time of our revolution, but the very, very early colonists, many of whom died that first year when the first Thanksgiving would be celebrated. This is kind of seasonal. 
Those colonists, they declared up and down that God himself ruled Massachusetts. They were right in the bloodstream of Oliver Cromwell across the ocean who militantly proclaimed that God alone is the ruler and all these corrupt kings and queens and royalty should be done away with, said Cromwell. And his followers in that Massachusetts Bay Colony were very, very enraptured with what Cromwell said. So they had a governor but that governor, they believed, was very, very, very much in the hands of God. Well, there are worse things than that, but obviously history would prove that things would go in different directions. And way back, the Jews believed that their king was God's anointed Saul. David, Solomon, God's anointed. And so the early Christians following the Jewish precedent were not ashamed to have kings and queens and so forth. Most of our Christian history goes through the time when kings and queens were very much the order of the day and Columbus himself would not have been financed to come to this country if it hadn't been for the generosity of the king and queen of Spain. So we're not about to knock kings, but on this feast of Christ the King, we had a very, very poignant reminder of what life in this world is all about a couple days ago when we remembered in sorrow the death of the leader, John F. Kennedy, and how in one moment, maybe in a few seconds, a leader in the earthly sense of the word can be snuffed out, not annihilated, because eternal life is another dimension, but snuffed out as far as this world is concerned. And so leaders of any description, of any nation, of any empire, of any country, at any time, can be here today and gone tomorrow. And the one that remains above it all, but interested totally to the point of giving his own flesh and blood is the one we today and every day of our lives refer to as Christ the King. And now may we proclaim our faith as we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the church, that we may continue the promise of the year of faith by deepening our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, people throughout the world will work together to seek an end to violence and hate. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are recovering from the typhoon in the Philippines, that God will speed the assistance which they require, comfort them, and guide all who are trying to assist them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who will celebrate Thanksgiving this week, that our hearts may be filled with gratitude for the gifts we have received and with generosity towards those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. For blessings on all the participants, parents, and coaches of the Holy Cross Sports Program, that they will demonstrate good teamwork and sportsmanship, develop lifelong friendships, and represent themselves and their parish in a faith-filled way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may give courage and strength to the sick and suffering, and that all those who have died may be welcomed by Christ into his Father's kingdom, especially Frank Monachino, Marion Guerrer, Father Rossi, Father Doyle, Catherine Bain, mother of Carol Scavone, and for Michael and Francis De Palma, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pause for a moment, make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O loving Father, you continue pouring your graces upon us, and you remind us that each one of us needs to become Jesus to all the people in my life each minute, each day. We ask this in your name, together with the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The second collection today is to help those devastated by the typhoon in the Philippines and other parts of the region. All money collected will be sent to Catholic Greece Relief Services, which is assisting in disaster relief. Please make your check out to this parish with typhoon relief in the memo notes field. Thank you in advance for your donation to help those in dire need. The offertory hymn is number 565. Now thank we all our God.
bring my sisters and brothers that their sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the Lord. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Christ, 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that are brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Apostolic <coughs> Administrator, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen Siri, graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world through Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and
informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom is ours, and glory is yours now. Lord Jesus Christ. We said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer to one another now a sign of Christ's peace. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Are there any Eucharistic ministers bringing our blessed Lord to members of our parish family? Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Okay, you can close the book. We are very grateful to all those who have donated to our CMA are, and are happy to report that we are now over 50% of our goal. For those who have not yet pledged, please prayerfully consider doing so and help us to reach the 100% mark very soon. This Thursday, our Thanksgiving Mass is at 9 a.m. For this Thanksgiving Mass, we are still in need of people to participate in the liturgy in a variety of ways please sign up in the Parish Center foyer. We invite you to light our Advent candles in the coming weeks. Sign-up sheet is in the Parish Center foyer. Our bereavement meeting, New Dawnings, will meet this Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the Parish Center. Begin the holidays with your family at our Breakfast with Santa, Saturday, December 7th, in Beacon Place. Tickets are on sale in the Parish Center foyer. This Monday evening at 7 p.m., there will be a meeting at St. Bernard's Park on Lake Avenue in the community room regarding a proposal to reduce Lake Avenue to one lane in each direction between Burley Road and Merrill Street. All are welcome to come, hear, and share at this meeting. There will be a coffee hour after mass in the parish center Please see our bulletin or website at holycrossrochester.org for all parish details, and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. The recessional hymn will be number 853, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. The Lord be with all. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go out to love and serve the Lord and never forget that Christ is our King. Thanks be to God. Amen.